Perhaps you've seen the viral videos, which many people claim are glitches in our reality. Inexplainable events that prove we're living in a simulated world. The idea might sound like a casual conversation you'd hear after watching The Matrix, but actually, as of late, it's become the subject of serious academic debate, particularly since 2016, when before a large audience of people, famous technology entrepreneur Elon Musk confidently suggested that the odds are that reality is actually a computer simulation run by a more advanced intelligence. He gave this perfectly sensical explanation why. As it turns out, this concept has been explored from both an ancient spiritual and a current scientific model. The different angles merge in Thomas W. Campbell's book, The Big Theory of Everything, or The Big Toe, where the simulation theory becomes the most compelling and logical answer to long withstanding questions regarding the nature of reality. Join the universe inside you, create a new reality, and explore the idea that your life is a simulation serving a higher intelligence and a school for your consciousness where you graduate when you discover that everything you are experiencing gets projected from inside of you. The ultimate goal of simulation has been to hack the brain neurologically, to simulate virtual reality directly into it. This means that the characters would believe they are independent and alive, but in fact are mere virtual creations. Could this have already been accomplished? Could our entire reality be virtual? According to ancient wisdom, yes. The theory that reality is not real goes back thousands of years. Take, for example, the Tao, which describes a mysterious, numinous unity, underlying and sustaining all things. It is inaccessible to normal thought, language, or perception, but is omnipresent. In Hinduism, the word maya means unreal or deceit. It's the state when the mind confuses the myriad forms of the world as real, without understanding the unity that binds them all together. Yogi Vashishta says, the world is nothing but a mere vibration of consciousness in space. It seems to exist, even as a goblin seems to exist in the eyes of the ignorant. All this is but maya, for here there is no contradiction between the infinite consciousness and the apparent existence of the universe. It is like the marvelous dream of a person who is awake. In the Kabbalah, the world in which we live is referred to by the Zohar as Alma de Shikra, which means the world of illusion or the world of lies. In Buddhism, reality is seen as a projection resulting from the fruition of karmic seeds, which are called sanskaras. Author Don Miguel Ruiz shares about Toltec wisdom, an ancient Mexican culture. He says this, The Toltecs believed that life is a dream and that we are always dreaming, even when awake. It's as though we are starring in our own movie and following a script we write ourselves. All those around us are starring in their own movie based on their concepts of the world. The Toltecs actually said, every human is an artist. The dream of your life is to make beautiful art. So evidently, illusion and the dream are consistent themes in our ancient spiritual texts. As we entered the technical age, however, the dream transformed into the word simulation, and the concept of the higher intelligence, or button pushers, took on new life too. Some calling the creator future humans, extraterrestrials, or even artificial intelligence. Of course, the question remains, which is it? And if it's true, can we know? One brilliant writer, Philip K. Dick, believed he might have discovered the answer. 
on an otherwise normal February day in 1974. Then, little-known science fiction author Philip K. Dick was at home following oral surgery, painfully anticipating the delivery of his medication and listening to the Beatles' song Strawberry Fields Forever. The doorbell finally rang, and when he opened it, he experienced a momentary epiphany unlike anything he'd ever experienced before. As he stared at a fish necklace on the woman standing at the door. Dick described that moment as an invasion by a transcendent higher mind. He said there was timelessness and that he was without thought, without a sense of self, but entirely consumed by information. It was a moment of pure consciousness when he said he saw the universe as it is. Dick said, A bioplasmic, orgone-like energy entered me, or rose up in me, and caused changes. One enormous miracle. And heightened awareness caused me to see a different universe. I experienced an invasion of my mind by a transcendentally rational mind, as if I'd been insane all my life, and suddenly I'd become sane. In this euphoric state, Dick described multiple parallel realities, timelines coexisting with our present one. The hallucinations increased in length and frequency over the following month, and he began to experience what he identified as a parallel life, as the man Thomas, a Christian in the first century AD. He described being persecuted by the Romans, and he had memories of Jesus. During one such episode, though he had never studied Latin, Dick spoke it perfectly, as witnessed by his close friend who had learned the language. Another result of this epiphany was that Philip K. Dick began experiencing clairvoyance. To such degree, he was able to intuit a life-threatening condition that was plaguing his infant son which was confirmed after the child was rushed to the hospital. The insight saved the baby's life. During the month of these heightened moments of awareness, Dick tried to convey the wisdom he was receiving through writing, and he stopped at no less than 9,000 pages, what is now known as The Exegesis of Philip K. Dick. Perhaps the most intriguing part of this story is the conclusion that he drew as a result. He said, We are living in a computer-programmed reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs, creating a déjà vu. These impressions are valuable and significant when some variable is changed an alternative world branches off. While many critics have assumed that Dick was experiencing the result of a drug-induced hallucination, his content has been deeply studied, and he's been the subject of TED Talks. And he's not alone. Other authors and spiritual leaders share similar epiphanies. For example, Byron Katie, whose book Loving What Is was written after a similar epiphany involving hitting bottom and observing a cockroach crawl across the floor. Eckhart Tolle, whose book The Power of Now was written after an epiphany that left him to sit in the park for two years to marvel at his new perception of reality. Anita Morjani, who experienced an out-of-body state as she lay dying, and described seeing the alternative timelines not taken in her life and those yet to come. She described it as though floodlights turned on in a massive warehouse where she had been living life under the perspective of a mere flashlight. Since these life-changing moments, all these authors have experienced a heightened sense of peace, wisdom, and understanding. 
astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson also believes we're living in a simulation for the same reasons. He says that because we have the power to program an entire world inside of a computer, imagine the future when we can create characters who perceive they exist independently of their creators. And then they create their own simulations, which means now you have simulations inside simulations, going all the way down. So, says Tyson, what is the likelihood that you're in the top one, the ultimate reality? You are probably made by a hyper-advanced alien basement dweller, or your creator might be better known as a simulated computer nerd. What may be the best explanation of this theory is made by a scientist and physicist named Thomas W. Campbell. With impressive credentials that include specialization in experimental nuclear physics, Campbell served in the defense industry for decades, for the Army's technical intelligence, and later in U.S. missile defense. In his richly detailed trilogy, My Big Toe, an acronym for My Big Theory of Everything, Campbell offers immaculate logic explaining how a multitude of seeming unnatural and contradictory occurrences, such as these, actually make sense when we come to understand that consciousness is simply information and we are generating perception from our consciousness. For example, your eyes receive light, your ears receive sound. It's all information. These electrical impulses end up in neurological patterns. But if you were in a dark cave, your brain could still receive the same pattern of neural stimulation through your imagination. The perception is generated inside the brain, not outside of it. According to Campbell, we each make our own reality, and I only get a shadow of yours, so I must interpret what you say or do. No one experiences the exact same reality. We all receive and generate different information, and we are all a part of this larger unified consciousness system just pieces of it, as it were, separate constructs in a unified field. It's a multiplayer game, just like World of Warcraft, with our own independent data stream. If consciousness is a pure data field that is self-aware and evolving, it can exist in two states, a system aware and unaware of these states. Different players which are each a part of us, interact with each other with a perception of free will. Our relationships are what help the system to evolve. So the goal of a virtual game is to win by experiencing challenges which are then overcome. This virtual physical reality is our schoolhouse. We are characters evolving in consciousness, says Campbell. We are evolving through an information system. As Campbell points out, when we understand and embrace that we are living a dream that we create, the theory unifies otherwise contradictory concepts, like physics with metaphysics, and the normal with paranormal. Everything that is an anomaly makes sense if you realize that you are creating it. In his famous 2017 TED Talk, Your Brain Hallucinates Your Conscious Reality, cognitive neuroscientist Anil Seth claimed this, Hallucination is an uncontrolled perception. Perception is a controlled hallucination. But the philosophy is broken down into simple language in Jeff Street's upcoming book, the grounds of existence. In it, he explains how consciousness is the ultimate computer generating symbolic representation of reality. 
how the props in our world are imaginary, but the experiences that we have are very real. And the empowering understanding that as information entities, we cannot be harmed by any games that we play in this thing we call life. Street also explains that in fact, suffering becomes the best stimulus for growth and evolution. To learn compassion, to learn non-judgment, and to master our belief system. And our belief system serves, in fact, as the confirmation that we are truly creating our world from within. You may prefer to believe that you're only a material form in a physical world. But if you do, just remember the next time you sing this harmless little lullaby, someone wanted to remind you of otherwise. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Hey everybody, Johnny Cashmere here with another Wrestling With Reality YouTube video. Alright, let's get into geography now, the North Pole. Okay, so when you look at a map or a globe, and you know, I used to have a globe as a kid, and I used to sit and stare at it for hours, okay? And this is how the North Pole always looked, it's just this big ice cap, right? If you look at all the maps now, watch what happens. Nothing. There's nothing there. Well, where did the North Pole go? What is happening, people? How about rainbow turkeys? More color fetish. Look at this. Never seen anything like that before in my life. Okay. Never have I seen anything like that. Well, how about, did you know Aladdin is really Chinese now? Look, I was shocked to discover that Aladdin was described as Chinese by the original tale. Chinese? And the last one for this video, birds can now fly upside down. Yes. Now watch this bird up top here. You ready? And flip. Look, well, let's flip over and just fly upside down for a while. It's totally, perfectly normal. Look, what? He's even flapping upside down? Are you kidding? Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is going to be Mandela Effect example update number 14. And let's just jump right in. For our last Mandela Effect example, we're going to be taking a look at King Tut's mask. This is, of course, incredibly historic and famous. Uh, we're going to be focusing on top on the top of the mask and the animal that is located there. So which animal is on the top of the mask? The correct answer is C, both the snake and the vulture. However, many people seem to remember just the snake. And uh, there's some images on Google that I found that just have it with just the snake, uh, no vulture. This image is from the King Tut uh, mini series that they had. And uh, there's just some, here's some other images that I found from Google. And they all just have the snake. But yeah, how do you guys remember this one? Anyways, with that out of the way, guys, let's get into this video. For this next possible Mandela effect, I think this one is pretty big based on the reaction that I've been seeing all over the place. I saw this on Reddit, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. Many people discussing this. And it has to do with the National Memorial Mount Rushmore that depict U.S. Presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. Now, I want you to take a minute to picture Mount Rushmore in your mind. What does that look like? Now I'm going to show you Mount Rushmore. Here it is. Do you see anything that seems out of place or odd? Okay, 
Now I will tell you, the thing that people are saying has changed is the coat that George Washington now has, or apparently has always had. People are saying that that was never the case, that the sculpture was just the heads. And another thing I don't remember is if you take a look at Abraham Lincoln's sculpture, you could see his hand. They were already starting to sculpt his body, and you could see the hand there. And I also don't remember that hand being there. But that might just be me. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think of all this. Greetings friends of the spiritual kingdom. Today we are going to explain all of the dimensions and talk about the great fifth dimensional shift that is happening in our planet. First of all, let's explain what exactly are dimensions. Dimensions are not places or locations. They're levels of consciousness that vibrate at a certain frequency. There exist numerous dimensions the fourth and fifth are simply higher than the one we've been living in. Ascension into even higher dimensions will continue even after we've reached the fifth. Each dimension vibrates at a higher rate than the one below. In each higher dimension, there exists a clearer, wider perspective of reality, a greater level of knowing. We experience more freedom, greater power, and more opportunity to create reality. In order for a higher dimension to be available to us, we need to vibrate in resonance with it. Shifting from one level of consciousness to the next higher one means becoming established on it so we don't get pulled back. The third dimension. First of all, it's important to understand that the third dimension is not the things you see. The table, the tree, the earth. These are forms. All things in form are still present in the fourth dimension and to some degree in the fifth as well. There is simply more light filled and not as dense and substantial. The third dimension is a state of consciousness that is very limited and restricted because we've been living in this third dimensional reality for so many lifetimes. We tend to assume that this is the only reality available to live in. We think this is simply what is reality, not realizing it's a very limited experience of reality. The third dimensional operating system runs on limited beliefs and a fairly inflexible set of rules and limitations. For example, in the third dimension, we learn to believe that bodies are solid they can't merge with each other or walk through walls. Everything is subject to gravity. Physical objects cannot disappear and we cannot read another person's mind. There's a solid belief in duality and judgment and fear are pervasive. The fourth dimension. This is the bridge we are all pretty much on now and will be for a relatively short period of time. In traveling, through the fourth dimension, we are preparing ourselves for the fifth one. Many of us have had experiences of the fourth dimension for a number of years now without realizing it. We can know we're experiencing the fourth dimension when we have moments of spiritual awakening and experiences of heart opening. Other times, it can happen when we're simply feeling clear and quiet inside. Everything within and around us feels lighter. There's a sense of spaciousness and upliftment. Time is no longer linear in the fourth dimension. There's an ongoing sense of being in present time with no interest or even awareness of past and future. And we can discover that the time is plastic. It can actually stretch and condense much to our third dimensional surprise. Manifestation is much faster in the fourth dimension. Something we simply think about can show up very quickly. 
In general, when we're experiencing joy, love, and gratitude, we're experiencing fourth dimensional consciousness. The fifth dimension. This great dimension has been described as the dimension of love and living totally from the heart. In order to enter into the fifth dimension and stay there, all mental and emotional baggage must be left at the door. No fear, anger, hostility, or guilt exists there. No suffering or sense of separation. Mastery over thought is a prerequisite. Manifestation in the fifth dimension is instantaneous. You think about something, it comes present. People generally communicate through telepathy and have the ability to read each other's thoughts and feelings with ease. The experience of time is radically different. Some describe it as everything happening at once. There is no distinction between past, present, or future. Many of us are having experiences or dreams that feel like visits to the fifth dimension. These experiences are exhilarating, tremendously exciting, and hopeful. They keep us moving on through the difficulties that sometimes arise as we travel through the fourth and into the fifth dimension. Transitional times. We are currently in what's been called transitional times or the end times. These are the times in which we are experiencing the death of third dimensional reality while at the same time beginning to travel through new and unknown landscapes of the fourth dimension. In essence, one whole structure of reality is collapsing while a new one is emerging. It's to be expected that some chaos, confusion, and disorientation will reign both within and around us as we attempt to adapt to a whole new way of experiencing reality. Many of us are beginning to experience radical changes in our lives. As we enter into these times, everything that does not serve us in shifting into a higher dimension has to fall away. This can include old relationships, lifetime careers, approaches to life we've traditionally taken, or any limited or negative thoughts and emotions that holds us in a lower vibration. Fortunately, we can now get a great help in making the transition to a higher vibration. Beings from higher dimensions are more present and eager to assist us. We simply need to ask for their help. We can also become aware of the flooding of divine light that's currently arriving from the higher dimensions. So releasing old patterns and negative emotions is getting easier and easier if we have the clear intention of letting them go. Many sources tell us we can take our physical bodies with us if we choose to dive into the fifth dimension. Some say that although other planets and galaxies have shifted into higher dimensions before in the history of the universe, this is the first time that souls in incarnation on a planet are going to be taking their physical vehicles with them into the higher dimension. Doing this is seen as the next step in humanity's evolution. It seems important for us to really take care of our bodies at this time. Radical transformation can be hard on the body, causing pain, aches, exhaustion, and flu-like symptoms. According to Ascension teachings, the Earth and all beings living on the planet are in the process of shifting into a whole new level of reality in which prevails a consciousness of love compassion, peace, and spiritual wisdom. Some say this shift will probably be complete within the next couple of decades. Others give no date, but all seem to agree it will be complete sometime in the near future. Although individuals will be each moving into the fifth dimension at their own rate when their frequency is high enough to match the vibration of the higher dimension, most teachings state that the shift the Earth and humanity are taking into the fifth dimension has been planned for eons. Also, that it has already been happening in the last few decades. December 21, 2012 was a date that was given as the midpoint 
of the shift taking place and that it will continue to unfold in more and more obvious ways, picking up speed as time passes. When that golden age comes, all people will be living in peace and harmony, experiencing oneness with all of life. Fully respecting all people and the earth itself. Love and compassion flowing through all communications. Equality, justice, and respect for all human beings reigning on the planet. No more hunger, poverty, or crime. Abundance available to all. Everyone living without fear, with complete trust in the divine. Everyone awake to the majestic, divine, interdimensional beings they truly are. When we reach that fifth dimensional state of being, people will be able to freely communicate with beings from other planets and galaxies and traveling to distant parts of the universe with these beings. It may sound insane, but when you think of it, haven't we all had dreams of living in a world like this? Many of us are having these intuitive feelings. Some are having clear visions, others are inwardly hearing about the reality of humanity's future. Some of us feel we have been waiting thousands of years for these times we are now entering. If we seek deeply within ourselves, we may find that these dreams of an ideal and peaceful world are actually both a distant memory of what we once experienced eons ago and an intuitive glimpse into what is now beginning to happen on our beautiful planet. Our longing to return to this ideal world is simply a yearning to finally return home to this beautiful world ahead of us. The question might arise, how can this possibly happen? How can this world turn around from where it is today and become this utopian kind of world? There is still so much darkness on the planet. Wars, hatred, prejudice, and injustice. The answer is twofolded. First, thousands of people on the planet are now experiencing an awakening of the heart at an unprecedented rate, and this awakening appears to be speeding up as time goes by. Not everyone on the planet at this time is making the choice, consciously or unconsciously, to make the shift into the fifth dimension. All souls have the choice to enter the fifth dimension given they have assimilated sufficient light to hold the energy levels that exist in that higher vibration. But many will be choosing to leave the Earth within the next couple of decades to move on to other third dimensional experiences in other parts of the universe. They will not have finished with what third dimensional reality has still to teach them. Those who are choosing to stay and make the shift with the Earth will be going through some intense and rapid changes as their bodies and minds make the radical changes needed to shift into the higher consciousness required for moving into the fifth dimension. If you feel a resonance with the information in this video, it's likely you've decided, either consciously or unconsciously, to shift with the Earth into the fifth dimension in this lifetime. If so, you have the choice to simply allow life to transform you, sometimes in uncomfortable ways, especially if you have any resistance to change. Life will do the job for you. Or you can choose to actively cooperate with the shifts taking place inside you. You can consciously let go of old patterns, release negative emotions, judgments, and thoughts, and work on keeping your vibration high at all times. This effort will likely ensure that your journey through the fourth dimension will be a lot smoother and even perhaps more rapid. But there's no right way to make this journey. We each have to do it the way that's best for us. One way or another, we will make it into the new reality that lies before us. What an exciting time to be alive. Thank you for watching. Please give us a like. Can DMT open portals to other dimensions and parallel universes? Can DMT enable us to communicate with other worldly higher beings? And do these beings really exist, or are they simply a hallucination? Let's find out.
let me tell you something that will completely blow your mind. An accounting of the matter that makes up the universe reveals that some 73% of it is made up of dark energy and another 23% is made up of dark matter, neither of which can we see nor understand. When we look into the heavens, 96% of it is invisible to us. Furthermore, the human eye is only capable of seeing around 0.0035% of the entire spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. This is the tiny portion we refer to as visible light, yet electromagnetic radiation is literally everywhere, existing as radio waves, gamma rays, x-rays, and magnetic fields, permeating all things. Just think about this for a moment. We are living in an illusion, created by our own limiting senses. Long before the scientific method and the advent of technological instruments of scientific measurement, humans intuitively understood that our journey here on Earth is an elaborate illusion. We learned that through spiritual cultivation. Although we believe things are what they appear to be, they are actually completely different. In Hinduism, the manufacturing of this illusion is achieved by the deluding power of the consciousness of God, which is called Maya. Maya is the simulated matrix that creates the illusion which makes us believe that what we consider to existence is actually real. Maya is the creation of the illusion of the three-dimensional world bound to time and space. It generates the external world or unreality while the inner world is replete with deeper meaning, a deeper story, and great mystery. You do not exist to serve the illusion. The illusion exists to serve you. Some of us are gifted with the natural ability to see through Maya, but most are not. Yet in altered states of consciousness, many more of us can pierce the veil to witness a more holistic version of the universe, which incorporates both the natural world and the vastness of the inner world to form a singular, harmonious worldview. What we see with our eyes is an illusion and what we envision with our mind is reality. This is the difference between sight and vision. For the record, there is seeing and then there is vision. The process of seeing is often described in clinical terms. Seeing is accomplished by visual receptors tethered to the brain. Vision, however, is accomplished within the mind, which resides in the brain and is aided by intuitive or knowing modalities of consciousness. The human retains the capacity to have both sight and vision. Vision allows the human to meet the object. And sight allows the light of the object to meet the human. This balance in universe brings equity and harmony to that extraordinary gift of visual perception. The great natural shamanic traditions of the world, as well as the psychedelic sciences, are known to induce visions, sending initiates into a virtual reality where the lines between what is real and what is possible are folded together into life-changing moments. The psychedelic experience completely negates the idea that the mind is in the brain. N-dimethyltryptamine, also known as DMT, is a chemical compound found in trace amounts in many plants, animals, and even within the human body. This magnificent substance has been known as the spirit molecule because of the effects it has on human consciousness when taken in concentrated form or when ingested within the visionary Amazonian plant medicine called ayahuasca. The process of successfully brewing this ritualistic drink requires a basic understanding of human biochemistry, so it is unclear how the indigenous people of the Amazon rainforest managed to discover the psychedelic properties of the ayahuasca brew. DMT is believed to be created within the pineal gland, the curious symmetrical organ in the center of the brain, which has for centuries been considered to be the seat of the soul by philosophers and spiritual adepts, such as René Descartes. The pineal gland, 
also known as the third eye, is the gate which gives us access to other realities and dimensions. When taken ceremonially by ancient people as a sacrament to induce a deeper connection to the non-physical realms of life, DMT is unparalleled in its capacity to liberate one from the materialistic assertions about life and human purpose that define our world today. In this way, DMT is the ultimate matrix buster because it carries the psychonautic voyager to a profoundly ineffable state of mind that swiftly draws one toward the realization that human consciousness is severely restricted in our material world. It offers a glimpse into the cosmic infinity of the mind and the universe beyond our understanding, proving that much more is possible than is permitted in contemporary consciousness. DMT when taken in its raw form, smashes the veil between ordinary and spiritual reality, carrying one into a unique time-space that verifies the multi-dimensionality of the soul by revealing realms of consciousness which lie beyond our waking awareness. The universe is designed in such a way that matter is never fully destroyed, only broken down into smaller and smaller parts, then reused again and again. Nothing really dies, it just transforms. We human beings are physically composed of atomic matter, which at some point in time provided a substance of stars and astral matter that preceded us. We live in symbiosis with nature, ourselves gathering form from the surrounding elements to provide a vessel for our consciousness, a relationship which still evades scientific explanation. The connection between matter and consciousness is a point of rigorous discussion amongst philosophers and scientists because this is precisely where the greatest mystery of all time exists. On one side of this connection lies a set of facts and objects that behave in accordance with logical rule sets confirmed by the five senses. On the other side lies the inexplicably vast ocean of experience that the human mind can bring forth into awareness. DMT is the spiritual science which allows us to traverse this gap, a feat left to those with the courage to open their minds to the potential found in the chemistry of consciousness. At the beginning of the 20th century, as the deepest parts of the Amazonian jungle were slowly being discovered, modern society gradually became aware of the existence of remote tribes and their shamanic practices permeated into Western culture. As a consequence, DMT was first synthesized in 1931 by Canadian chemist Richard Mensch, and in 1965, French pharmacologist Jacques Poisson isolated the compound from vine leaves used by the Aguaruna Indians that inhabit the jungles of Peru. Since then, many of those who have studied or ingested DMT themselves reported that it was an astonishing substance and its implications stretched far beyond our comprehension and almost certainly beyond the boundaries of our visible universe. From 1990 to 1995, Dr. Rick Strassman conducted a DEA-approved clinical research at the University of New Mexico, administering more than 400 DMT doses to 60 volunteers. His research made him believe that near the time of death, the pineal gland releases a massive dose of DMT, which could account for the near-death experience phenomenon. When our individual life force enters our fetal body, the moment in which we become truly human, it passes through the pineal and triggers the first primordial flood of DMT. Later, at birth, the pineal releases more DMT. As we die, the life force leaves the body through the pineal gland, releasing another flood of this psychedelic spirit molecule. This burst is thought by Dr. Strassman to be responsible for bringing the human soul home to the source of universal consciousness, reconnecting one soul to the experience of infinite love and absolute peace. His detailed report on these sessions is a fascinating exploration of the nature of the human mind and the therapeutic potential of psychedelic substances. In 2013, researchers conducted a study that showed DMT was found in the pineal gland of rodents, enforcing Dr. Strassman's controversial hypothesis. 
the visions and out-of-body experiences of those who took DMT seemed to solidify this claim. They reported being transported to entirely different, yet somewhat familiar dimensions. These dimensions seemed to be governed, or at least inhabited by humanoid beings that were always labeled as otherworldly. After conducting all of these experiments, Dr. Rick Strassman wrote a book based on his research on DMT, called DMT, The Spirit Molecule. In his book, we can also find multiple stories about the beings encountered, documented by the people injected with DMT, in over 400 sessions, during the course of five years. It can be very difficult to write during an intense DMT trip, and sometimes, equally hard to recall what happened. For this reason, researchers sat with participants and took notes as they detailed their experiences real-time. Over 50% of the 1,000 pages of notes had some kind of reference to interactions with otherworldly entities. Likewise, Philip Meyer spent two decades collecting over 300 DMT trip reports and identified contact with sentient, independently existing beings in over 66% of them. Terence McKenna, an author and a researcher, also wrote and spoke about his interactions with these entities, including the continuously emerging archetype of the spirit guide teacher, who with alien, insect-like, and interstellar qualities, was somehow a diplomatic anthropologist come to give us the keys to galactic citizenship. Graham St. John, PhD, who is an Australian cultural anthropologist specializing in event cultural movements, conducted quite a large body of research and anecdotal reports of DMT encounters in Chapter 12 of his book, called Mystery School in Hyperspace. Considering all of the statements made there, DMT beings are usually reported to fall into one or more of the following categories. Playful, prankish, or ornery, sometimes looking like weird elves, gnomes, and tykes, who often focus on joking or helping to clean the individual. Anthropomorphic beings, who appear to be extraterrestrial or ultra-dimensional and are usually teachers or guardians. These beings may even include more strangely looking beings, including reptiles, bees, spiders, cacti, mantises, arachnids, robots, jellyfish, and even octopods. Helpers or guides taking the semi humanoid form of angels or multi dimensional teachers. These can often manifest as deceased loved ones or family members, giving guidance and teaching lessons, and are known to include spiritual teachers and prophets, like Buddha, Jesus Christ, Krishna, Muhammad, and more. Some type of galactic council of spiritual elders looking to impart knowledge, galactic laws, and instructions for behavior. And yet, we have barely scratched the surface of the theories that have been put forward by various scientists and philosophers about the DMT entities discussed in St. John's book. Here are some theories suggested by these scientists and philosophers. DMT is the missing link connecting us to beings from ancient shamanic realms through information encoded into our DNA. Graham Hancock DMT creates mystical visionary states, connecting us to God, similar to the prophets of the Hebrew Bible. Rick Strassman We have no concrete answers here, only self-reported experiences and theories. Scientifically, it is very challenging, if not impossible, to objectively prove whether these beings exist in our reality or in parallel planes or dimensions, or if they only exist independently in the minds of DMT users. For many of the researchers in this field, including Dr. Rick Strassman, it is hard to deny the feeling of truth and consistency across people's experiences. You may have already drawn your own conclusions on the topic, regardless of what science might have to say about it. 
The most important part of all of this for me is not to objectively, scientifically come to a consensus about who and what the beings are, but to understand and accept that these experiences are loaded with incredible, life-altering meaning for the people who have them. What matters is not if the beings are real in any objective sense, but how their subjective realness can influence people's consciousness, behaviors, identity, and understanding of themselves and their universe. Communication with DMT entities can be absolutely profound and life-changing, regardless as to our objective standard for determining the validity of the entities or the experiences. Therefore, from a psychotherapeutic perspective, it is just as valuable to focus on the function of the entities and how they can inspire our future evolution and growth. Because as Graham St. John concludes, when it comes to objective proof of the entities, our likelihood of establishing their true identity is as futile as nailing the nature of God once and for all. Dear Pixie, you asked us. I would like to ask a question regarding the Mandela Effect. If you switch timelines, are you aware that you have switched timelines? Are all the people you are now communicating with alternate versions of the original individual? Or have they all timeline jumped as well as you? May we firstly respond by saying that this that you speak of, the Mandela Effect, is a natural organic occurrence. Whilst there are technologies that replicate this pattern or aim to do so, the phenomenon you ask us about is a natural organic geometric wave pattern that in a healthy balanced universe, solar system and planet moves in a spiraling motion. Within a third density reality cycle, the timeline switching or jumping is not felt and the individual is not aware of the shifts or jumps. Once an individual embraces a fourth dimensional awareness, then shifts and jumps are felt, yet awareness of them in the sense that brings cohesive understanding is not yet there. Within a fifth dimensional awareness, and thus the fourth density reality cycle, then comprehension, decoding, awareness and processing begins to occur. At this level, the shifts and jumps are felt and understanding of them begins. The next step to this, which we could say sits upon the merge point betwixt the upper fifth and lower sixth dimensions, then working with this natural and organic pattern begins. The individual learns to go with the energetic flow of the universe, if you will, and willingly allows themselves to stand in the pathway of the jump. This may be known to you as conscious timeline jumping or advanced manifestation. The individual begins to choose which timeline to jump into and when to jump. The truth of the situation is simply that which we shall call harmony. It is the harmonious merging of self with the environment. We speak not so much of the trees, rocks, crystals, sands and seas, but of the energetic electromagnetic geometric pulse systems of the natural cosmic web or source matrix reality. Although indeed the trees, rocks, crystals, sands and seas are your anchor points and thus your grounding. These conscious timeline jumpers are the master magicians within humanity. There have been many of these master magicians throughout your time period since the beginning of your known history and of course long before that point. Now, at the latter point of the transformational year that is your 2017, there are many of these master magicians in incarnation at various levels of awakening and awareness. 
These individuals are he or she who live in harmony with the elements. Yet living in harmony equates to wielding power over these elements, commanding them, if you will. Although in truth, this is not what they do. For they stand as humble servants to the elements, as the elements stand as humble servants to them. This service to others, mirrored unification, is true harmony and the true blueprint for your planet and humanity. The other individuals you communicate with in your reality are both alternate versions of the original individual and are the same individual from different perspectives. They have both stayed in the original timeline and jumped timelines with you, depending on perspective. This, we realise, is a convoluted concept for the third dimensional mind, and we shall work within the available fields and boundaries of our conduit to explain this. From the perspective of the subjective self, the perspective of separation and individuality, you are jumping timelines within the private boundaries of your own individual reality. From this perspective, there is only you jumping these timelines. Therefore, you continually connect with alternate aspects of individuals you know. You interact with alternate aspects of other individuals constantly. These alternate aspects you are presented with assist you to formulate strong boundaries within your own subjective reality, leading to individualization and awareness of self through an individuated awareness of your I am presence. You are aware of unity and unification. You would not be aware of the shifts and jumps if you were not vibrating within a fifth dimensional reality and therefore so too are you aware of unification. The awareness of the different reality bubbles, shall we call them, in relation to your own subjective interpretation of your own personal reality bubble, assist you with understanding and achieving individualization at both physical and soul level. From the objective perspective, one can see the pattern of jumps occurring from the individualized viewpoint of all beings are separate and the unified viewpoint of all beings are one. From the individualized viewpoint, there are many different individuals jumping from timeline to timeline as they create their individual reality matrices based on their choices and the outcomes of those choices. One pattern presents the convoluted, fractalized, infinite reality matrix of just one individual with their choices, both choices consciously made in this reality from your perspective, and choices that could have been made but were not, again, from your perspective. In truth, all choices are made and all paths are walked and each individual creates a holographic aspect of themselves with every choice made. These are known to some as choice points. Moving further into the individualized matrix, we see many timelines converging together at the points where many holographic aspects of self made the same choices over and over in a repeating spiral meaning that events are in all timelines, rather than in a few or only in one. These are those times when you feel totally in alignment with your destiny, known to many as magical moments. These are the convergence points or node points within the matrix. Yet this presentation is of one individual's convoluted holographic matrix field. There is also humanity's matrix field, which is the presented choices of each incarnated individual. From this individualized perspective, then one interacts with others who did not make the jump with you, 
for due to your differing levels of awareness and expansion, you cannot make these jumps together. Yet it may be that you notice expansion within another, a leap or growth in intelligence and in consciousness. Using the Mandela effect model you speak of, it is the alternate aspect of that individual you are now seeing. For the original aspect does not hold this level of awareness, expansion or intelligence. This is a third dimensional interpretation of the web of choices or the choice expression matrix. Intricately organized, guided and assisted every step of the way. Yet your free will rights, signatures and laws may make you feel as though you walk this path alone and without guidance. From the perspective of unification and oneness, humanity is one organism and the timelines are jumped together simultaneously. Therefore, from this point of view, if you have jumped, so have those around you. This is the fifth dimensional perspective and is most accurate and close to the truest reality. For in the truest reality, there is only one soul in physical incarnation. Therefore, all timeline jumps are made by that one soul. The pattern here is that which shall show you the intricacies of which we speak. The third dimensional mind is not equipped for the quantum understanding needed to see these patterns. Yet your brain, interface for the third dimension that it is, is able to upgrade itself and reformulate data in accordance with different streams of information coming in from different dimensions. Your brain does this via the right hemisphere pathways. The left hemisphere pathways at this level are that of sound, music, vibration and light. Therefore the matrix patterns are perceived in sound, music, vibration and light and delivered that way. The right hemisphere pathways work with picture, symbol and shape. In order to begin to download the information needed to see the response we present here as answer to your question, then one would look at pattern, energy field, shape and colour. This is then translated through the left hemisphere of the brain and presented as words. Using our conduit as an example, we could say that we, the white-winged collective consciousness of nine, are the right-brained codes through right hemisphere pathways, and that this transmission is the decoded left-brained presentation through the left-brained pathways. For those who are able to decode our words and meanings, you need not follow any kind of initiation or activation into this understanding. For you, indeed, are the master magicians that we speak of. You are he or she who consciously jumps timelines. You are he or she who sees and understands that which you call the Mandela Effect. In truth, you are he or she who creates that which you call the Mandela Effect. For that which is natural and organic is created through the consciousness that joins in harmony with it. We repeat, for that which is natural and organic is created through the consciousness that joins in harmony with it. You are not separate from your universe and you are not separate from the matrix fields, webs and blueprints that are the mathematical codes that exist around you, within you and as you. Therefore, the aligned response to your questions are translated into third dimensional understanding. There are some who are aware they have jumped timelines and there are some that are not. In some timelines, you interact with alternate aspects of the individuals around you, and in other timelines, the individuals have jumped with you. Your questions are regarding the network of probability fields. These networks move in certain patterns, 
and every so often these patterns change, shall we say. The change in patterns is that which you call the Mandela effect and that we shall call outcomes or eventualities. The interaction with alternate self aspects or original self aspects depends entirely upon your action at the moment of the choice point, convergence point or node point. For the subjective experience is that which creates the greater reality for you. We repeat, the subjective experience is that which creates the greater reality for you. In truth, there is only you, walking this path of individualization and integration in physical form. It is you and only you taking the lone journey, walking the lone path. Alone, all one. We are the White Winged Collective Consciousness of Nine.